Assalamu alaikum, hey and welcome to the Muslim Life Coach Institute podcast. This is Abdul Shaheed, master coach, trainer and therapist. And this is where I help you to coach yourself and your clients on how to overcome anxiety, fear and all of the emotional baggage that keeps so many of us stuck in our minds, our lives and our relationships. Hey and welcome back to this week's episode. We are actually on episode number 47, if you can believe it. Actually, you know what? The re- reality is that I've done more episodes than this, but um, I got to numbering it after so many episodes had started. So anyway, in this, uh, in this episode, what I want to talk to you about is something that creates havoc for many of us and we don't even realize that we're doing it. And um, you might call this self-sabotage. You might call it um, the obstacle blocking your way. Um, Often what tends to happen is that we get stuck in this feeling of resentment and this feeling of, I don't know, you want to call it anger. And um, and we, we get stuck in that feeling for like a prolonged period of time. And, uh, and it's often... It's often a feeling, you know, of discontentment with the way that, you know, we've had to experience life. And uh, and it's totally understandable because you've gone through some bad experiences in your life, right? You've gone through some bad experiences in your life. Um, Things have happened and it sits under the surface and it's, you know, it's it's almost like... uh, is playing out in the back of your mind constantly and even though you've moved on and you're getting on with your life every so often it sabotages you it's like this uh, invisible you know wall that you keep knocking into every time you feel like you you're about to progress um, and you knock into it and uh, and it resurfaces as you know memories or resurfaces as uh, you know, fits of um, losing control or getting angry or, you know, just snapping at people or just getting really super irritated yourself. And um, and many, many a times like we we talk about how this is, you know, holding us back and it's keeping us stuck. And, you know, and then you go and speak to people out in the in the in the coaching world or in the therapy world and and they're telling you that you've got deep seated uh, issues that you need to deal with and and really look many a times what happens is that we are we we feel like some level of anger and resentment with the with uh, you know with Allah and no one likes to say that no one likes to say that but the reality is that you know you feel something inside of you and it really does affect many of us if if not most of us right and uh and you know when you get into a fit of withdrawal or anger or resentment or sadness whatever that feeling is that you don't like experiencing when that happens it's like a storm of emotion inside of you and it really does affect affect like most people right this happens to most people but the t- when it becomes problematic for us is that it becomes an obstacle in your path to life now imagine you show up in everyday life willing to inject mercy into every conversation into every thought into every interaction that you have with others what do you think life would be like just imagine that think about what would it be like what would life be like if you were to inject mercy into every scenario that you've got right every conversation every thought every you know every situation of in you know where you have to relate to other people you see i really want you to think about that for a moment because what happens is that most people they don't do that not most people but you know when you're struggling it's when you're struggling this is what what happens when people are struggling when they're stuck in 
you know momentary self-sabotage or even if it's prolonged self-sabotage like what happens is that we're not doing that we show up and we in, we inject anger or sadness or frustration into every situation into every conversation into every thought and we what tends to happen is that we get caught up in this storm of emotions we're experiencing and we find it difficult to think straight when we're in that storm because you can't think straight in a storm you're you know you feel destabilized and you feel like you're run, you're trying you need to run to a place of safety but you don't know where to go and in that emotional state something terrible happens people decide that it's okay to you know act out it's okay to just behave badly or it's okay to self sabotage and look as i as i describe this to you i don't want you to get angry with yourself or get angry with the people around you and i don't want you to go into any mode of self sabotage i want you just to look at this you know very uh, logistically very clinically right i want you just to look at it be an observer of your you know what's actually going on if you can relate to what i'm talking about just be an observer of what's running through your mind right and uh and I want you to be compassionate and merciful. This is where you inject the mercy and the compassion. And you've got to do it into your own thoughts about yourself, your own thoughts about your life and what you've experienced. And recognize that you are just like all other human beings. We all learn from our mistakes. And you can always make things better by working on things. You can work things out. You can work things out. Recognize, um, recognition. Sorry, of of this is what needs to change, right? This is the essential ingredient here, like recognizing what's going on here. So you want to inject compassion and mercy into your thoughts, into your mind as you're thinking about this. You want to be compassionate to yourself, in other words, right? As you're thinking about this, as you're going through this, so that you can actually see what's going on. So when people experience these difficulties, what they want to do, you know, when you go into this emotional storm that, that I'm talking about, what people often do is that they want to blame other people or they want to blame, right? They, don't, they often don't want to blame themselves, right? That's, that's natural because you want to protect yourself. So you don't want to blame yourself. Some people do, but generally speaking, people don't want to blame themselves. And what they do because when they blame themselves, they just make themselves feel bad. So because they don't want to feel bad anymore, then what they do is that we end up blaming others. And not just the people that we love, but the, but the people that we want to blame. Maybe they are blameworthy. Maybe they are blameworthy because of the stuff that we went through. But you know, when you hold on to this stuff, and you know it is from a long time ago, like blaming other people... Um, from you know a decade ago it doesn't change anything except that it changes your emotional state right now and that affects you it doesn't play, affect anyone else and maybe it affects the people around you so here's what happens here's what tends to happen a lot like we you know people we i say people but we we want to blame our spouse like you're going to blame your husband or your wife um, you want to blame the in-laws you want to blame the parents you don't want to blame your children for everyone it's different for everyone it's different but you're blaming someone right and what i see a lot of couples doing is that they want to blame everyone but themselves so they blame each other first right they blame each other they blame the kids and it's his or her influence on my child right so something's going on with the, with with the kids so you want to blame the other kids the friends it's my husband or it's my wife and if it wasn't for them we wouldn't have these problems like you know parents do it all the time they blame the children couples do it all the time they blame the in-laws and look what i want you to understand is i don't want you to go into that you know those th those thoughts about who's to blame now 
I want you to stay with the thoughts of compassion and mercy. Be compassionate and merciful to yourself, even as you listen to this. If you have a relationship with any person and you have difficulty in misunderstandings or even bad behavior between the two of you, it's not the fault of everyone else. And here's the worst thing. Here's the worst thing. We want to blame Allah. And what tends to happen is that we have these thoughts. Well, Allah is seeing all of this happening. Why doesn't he change it? He has control. I'm making dua. These are the kind of thoughts that go through, go through so many people's minds. And what I want to say to you is no. We humans, we have free will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability to have free will. In other words, you have the ability to make choices. Now, in a given moment when, when things are not within your control, you may not have had choices. But right now, you have ability to make choices. If someone behaves badly, it's their choice. If another human being behaves badly, if you behave badly towards someone else, it is your choice or it's their choice. If your behavior is your choice, their behavior is their choice. They're exercising free will, just like you exercise free will to make decisions, to make choices, even if you tell yourself that you're compelled and you've got no choice. But the fact is, just because we tell ourselves we have no choice doesn't mean we have no choice. We have choice, we have free will. And when you exercise that, or when someone else exercises their free will to behave badly towards you, you can't blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Because Allah is, you know, is all, um, what's the word? The justice of Allah is equal. Like he, he is absolutely uh, balanced in distributing justice. So the you know the consequences and the rewards, they all come as a result of what we do, right? Now that's not to say you're to blame for something that happened to you because of the bad behavior of someone else. But that bad behavior of someone else, they acted upon free will. And they will be held accountable, just like you and I, we're held accountable for what we do and what we don't do. But the... But what doesn't help us is that when we start to blame Allah for all of the things that have happened or are happening, instead of looking at things logistically, making choices and finding our way out of every given situation. Because choices are like your signposts. They take you right and they take you left, they take you straight, they take you up, they take you down. If you want to go up, you need to choose up. If you want to go right, you need to choose right. When, there is, when, when you have a bunch of options right in front of you, you just got to choose from one of them. You can't choose from hypothetical, made-up stuff. you got to make a decision on what you have right before you. Make a choice. And that means, a, you know, choice means change. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affords us these choices, it means that the fruits of our decisions are down to us. Like... Sure, the outcome, the results, you know, everything, everything is by the decree of Allah. But it's also the decree of Allah that he gave everyone free will, that he will, he will reward them and punish them according to their behavior, according to what they create. So the fact is that when people behave badly, and, this, and I see this a lot, look folks, this is normal that we want to blame. And the reason I'm talking about this is uh, uh, under the banner of self-sabotage is because that's what we do. The worst of the sabotage that you could possibly experience is that you think that the creator of the heavens and the earth, the mo most merciful, the, you know, al manan the one who gives everything, never ending, right? Like you think that Allah would not give you what you need. Now, if people behave badly, then it's then they will be responsible, they will be held accountable for that. 
and you have to trust that you have to trust the justice of Allah and but you have to also contextualize people's behavior is with them if a husband and wife misbehave with each other and then they blame decree or they blame the children or they blame others it is not those people that created their behavior it's their thinking and their feeling and their you know what they think and feel that drives their behavior and so if that's the case then that means that you know someone's bad you know every my bad behavior is down to me your bad behavior is down to you and the fact that you've got free will the power of choice i mean the power of choice is so powerful because it means that you can choose change you can choose to stay the same but you've got to recognize that there is a power in that and it's freedom and that's what i want to tell you folk it is freedom don't blame yourself don't blame others and especially do not blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't like a situation if you don't like what's going on like make a decision to change it if you're staying in this emotional storm that's being created for you now after many years then what's happening is that right now in your mind you're choosing to focus on the things that do not create freedom for you and the worst thing about it is that you're using the freedom of your choice the freedom of that power of choice to create that so i want you to take a hard look at this i want you to really take a hard look at this and i want you to understand that this is actually freedom this is actually freedom your ability to choose your life is one of the greatest blessings that you have so don't see it as a curse see it as what it is is freedom and you can free yourself from all of those toxic you know emotions that you're feeling even though it may have been justified for you to feel that um because of the bad behavior of others but you don't have to stay in that you can let that go and you can hand that over to Allah at any given moment you can hand that over to Allah and trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take care of his affairs your affairs and will distribute justice as it is his place to do so and so all you have to do is focus on creating your life using the power of choice like you don't have to stay in this anger or the sadness you don't have to stay in a state of anxiety or panic you don't have to stay in stay in any one of these you can choose your way out of it it's freedom it's freedom and i i want you to really understand this because it is the most powerful thing in the world and listen if you're in the the nafs you know life transformation program and you're you're wondering you know i want to take this further i want to get you know take a deep dive into this i want you to go to the self go to the the emotional sabotage go to the emotional escapism class and watch that and take the steps in applying what i'm teaching in that if you're if 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 you really want to get over this and you're struggling with this i want you to and you're on my program then listen like cuz i'm i'm speaking to you cuz i know that many many of you who listen to this are students of the of the of the life transformation program and you're already going through this journey so if you're doing that i want you to go to the you know the emotional escapism and understand that like really reflect on what what is being taught there because it's so powerful because it happens to all of us it's a human thing it's a human thing and you don't have to blame anyone you don't have to blame yourself but you can deal with it and you can ex- and go through the exercises and do exactly what i'm teaching you go to the, the you know go to the belief classes and understand how to change what's going on in your life and you'll find that you're going to be able to change all of this and listen folk if if you're not in the program like go back over these go back over um the previous podcasts that I've put out I'm teaching a lot of this stuff in the podcast is this some of this stuff a lot of this stuff I you know it's going to really impact you if you take the steps in reflecting understanding and applying if you do that it will change your life like just this podcast alone if you can understand what I've taught here it will have such a dramatic impact on your life 
it's super important. Like reflection is the key to that freedom. Reflection is the key to that awareness, to opening up your heart, to understanding what's going on. If you can understand what I'm teaching you here, like you'll have a massive impact. I hope it all makes sense and, uh, and take action. Like take mental action. That's the first action that you've got to take. And, uh, and if that makes sense, then just look out. Look out for what's to come in the, in the coming podcast. Inshallah, I'm going to share some, some, some gold nuggets with you. And uh, and of co- of course, all of this stuff is is you know it is uh, emanating from the the science of the nafs, um, something that we're going to use to transform our lives. Inshallah. Jazakum khair. Hey, if you're ready to actually take the steps to transform your life, I want to invite you to join me on the Nafs Life Transformation Coaching Program where I help you to take the steps to making the transformation of your mind, your relationships, and your life. Just go over to themuslimlifecoach.org forward slash live. That's the T-H-E muslimlifecoach.org forward slash live.